And for more on the story, we now welcome to studio Dr. Chai Eitan Cohen Yanorotchak, Turkey expert at Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Thank you so much for being here. You. Can you believe it's been 10 years? That Take flies. us back. <laughs> time really does fly. Take us back to that time and how this incident so severed relations between Turkey and Israel. Well, uh, we should emphasize that during the 1990s, we happened to see a honeymoon between uh, Israelis and the, and the Turkish uh, administrations. Uh, the most important uh, factor for that was the uh, separatist Kurdish uh, organization. And uh, since the uh, head of the uh, PKK, Abdullah Hujalan, was later captured, so Turkey began to uh, less dependent on Israel in terms of uh, weaponry. And uh, then, of course, we all uh, happen to know what happened uh, with the cast-led operation. Uh, before the cast-led operation, Turkey functioned as a mediator between Syria and Israel. And with the cast-led operation, Turkey basically uh, you know, came to the conclusion that uh, they, were, uh, they were in a way humiliated. And uh, that's why uh, so they began to downgrade the relations uh, between the two countries. And pers uh, President Erdogan took this very personal. And given also the fact that nine... Um, Turkish nationals were also killed uh, in this uh, attempt of uh, breaking the uh, breaking the blockade. Uh, so uh, it soared uh, the relations, and since then, uh, unfortunately, uh, on daily basis, we are seeing demonization of Israel uh, in the Turkish uh, media, uh, institutionalized media, and also uh, in the uh, social media. Even if the fact that the two countries signed a normalization deal later, we don't see that it is a genuine normalization. I'm going to stop you right there because you sure. made mention of the souring of ties. We spoke to people in Turkey right now about how they are feeling on this day. Let's take a quick listen. There was a ship that was going to aid. Israeli soldiers attacked that ship unlawfully. We had a right to go there and we had the documents, but they attacked our ship unlawfully. Our citizens got injured. They had to pay compensation, but they did not. It will not affect Israeli tourists because the doors open for them. It's their prime minister's call, and as you know, he has a trial currently. Their prime minister is on trial because of lawlessness. When you break the glass, there's no meaning from an apology. If they were honest about their apology, they can finish the unfinished charity on their own, and we can feel the apology. If there are relations between Israel and Turkey, it's just economic relations. During this time, there is no trouble between our countries, but we don't know what will happen in the future. Our government knows much better. Yes, hostility between the two leaders can affect tourism. I don't know how it will affect the local people, but it's the decision of the Israeli people. We don't have a bad perspective towards Israeli tourists. We don't think badly about them. It doesn't matter which country people are from or which language they speak. All tourists are welcome here. Our door is always open for all country citizens. And listening to that very briefly, just they, tell us... They are saying hostilities, mm -hmm. right? But uh, given the fact that the Israelis and the Turks have never fought... Uh, even in order to uh, have a proper relationship in terms of diplomacy, we did not sign a peace treaty with uh, with Turkey, right? So, uh, I mean, unfortunately, we see that the uh, the public uh, mindset was very poisoned uh, with this uh, whole uh, friction. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think that uh, it will be a genuine normalization uh, in the near future. Well, we're certainly going to be watching to see how things do unfold. We can only hope for an improvement yeah. in yeah. relations. Thank you so much, Dr. Chai Etan Cohen, Yanarocha, Turkey expert from the Jerusalem Institute for Strategic Studies. Thank you so much.